So we're going to be digesting this book here, The Mind Illuminated. Talks about the benefits of mindfulness. Uh, when you have cultivated mindfulness, life becomes richer, more vivid, more satisfying, and you don't take everything that happens so personally. Um, so definitely uh, the vividness, the richness, the vividness, the satisfaction uh, has been my experience. Uh, there's a, I, I've said it in the past, and I'll say it again, it's sort of like the ordinary becomes extraordinary. So like you'll see a butterfly flying in the sky and like actually see it. Um, you will see a flower or, 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 you know, a piece of grass and be enthralled by it, for instance. You'll just be like, wow, that is so cool that like, butterflies exist and that hummingbirds are, are are in this world and look at all these different species that are like interacting and you know and 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 you'll see a flower and all of a sudden it's like that flower could have been in your garden for 20 years and all of a sudden you feel it feels like you see it for the first time right so there's this richness that develops from this practice of mindfulness uh more vivid uh, colors and patterns and shapes uh, come to light. And it's almost as if you're sort of seeing life anew. Every moment, though, is anew. And it's not like, oh, I've seen that before. Um, you don't take everything so personal. Attention plays a more appropriate role within the greater context of a broad and powerful awareness, attention. And this is the ability to really uh, hone in on um, not only understanding the nature of the mind, but allowing, learning how to have the mind work for us, as opposed to just allowing the mind be the monkey mind and it goes wherever it wants to go, right? And so like, you know, come over here, look, Mind can be a very, very powerful, uh, powerful object if we learn how to use it. It can be absolutely devastating if we just allow the mind to take over. Uh, you're fully present, uh, happier and at ease because you're not so easily caught up in the stories and melodrama the mind likes to concoct. <laughs> All right, how many melodramas has your mind concocted in the last uh, six months? Um, your powers of attention are more used, uh, are used more appropriately and effectively to examine the world. You become more objective and clear headed and develop an enhanced awareness of the whole. When all these factors are ripe, here you go. There's a ripening that occurs. You're ready for profound insight into the true nature of reality. These are like extraordinary benefits of mindfulness. The two main objectives of a meditation practice are to develop a stable attention and cultivate powerful mindfulness that optimizes the interaction between attention and awareness, attention and awareness. Uh, a famous analogy in Zen compares the mind to a pool of water. This is a helpful way to think about the training and goals of meditation. If the water is agitated, churned up by wind and currents, it doesn't provide a clear reflection, nor can we see to the bottom. But as the water calms, the debris that made the pool muddy begins to settle and the water itself becomes clear. A calm pool also reflects the sky and clouds perfectly. In the same way, if the mind is agitated, disturbed by the concerns of daily life, it doesn't accurately reflect experience. Instead, we're caught up in projections and lack perspective. The inner workings of the mind remain murky as well, full of mental debris that clutters our thinking. Developing stable attention is the key to making the water calm, settled, and pure. Mindfulness is like the sunlight that illuminates the surface 
as well as the depths. Don't forget, however, that the path is as important as the goal. The stages during meditation may bring you to a state of peace and insight, but they are also an exciting journey of discovery into the nature of the mind. Relish in this beautiful and sometimes challenging journey. The goal isn't just getting to a calm, quiet pool, but learning about the makeup of the water itself as it goes from choppy to still, from cloudy to clear to crystal clear. Uh, I'm a big fan of that. That I don't talk about goals so frequently, right? It's not like the goal is this. It's like uh, by doing this practice, um, you will get a sense of the nature of your mind, right? And in that, uh, maybe a na- uh, into the into a, into a deep understanding of the nature of reality that in the meditation practice, we're not trying to get to any state, but states emerge spontaneously. Um, And that the journey is just as exciting as any discovery that you'll make or any state that you will achieve. That the journey is a process of uh, learning about yourself, right? And being totally non-judgmental with it and really cultivating all those things that we've talked about in the past of loving kindness for yourself, self-compassion, gratitude for where you're at, right? Whatever it might be. Um, But I like that, you know, the murkiness of the water. If the water is agitated, well, we can't see through it. Um, We can't see the reflection. Uh, If it's not and, and we let the debris settle, um even like those snow those snow bulbs right the 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 the, the, with little uh snowflakes in them and you shake them and it gets all cloudy and you can't really see what's inside and then all of a sudden everything settles and you see so as basic as this could be as many times as we said it i always enjoy like coming to books and seeing that you know after all the research that they've done, after the years and years of research that they've done, it's as simple as this. How to begin your practice. So if anyone has any questions on how to begin your practice, here it is. Are you ready? Direct your attention toward a well-defined meditation object. This is your anchor. I, I added that part. This is your anchor. I added that part. But that's that's what we've called the anchor for four years. Whenever your attention slips, redirect it back to that object. Repeat this as often as needed. <laughs> I just love it. I love this stuff. I love it, right? Because, um, well, what are you doing? <laughs> what am I doing? It's like a, it's a, it's a, it, it's a, it, it's an exercise of the mind, right? It really is. Uh, direct your attention toward a well-defined meditation object. Whenever your attention slips, redirect it back to that object, and repeat. Because what's going to happen? Inevitably, right? It's going to slip. Ah, it slipped again. 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 And what do you do? Come back. Come back. Come back. Come back. Um, you know, when we write prescriptions for medications, you may have, if you've ever gotten a medication that's to take as needed, right? We write PRN. Uh, and I love how it's, uh, how he says, um, repeat this as often as needed. <laughs> it's like, what's your prescription? Direct your attention uh, to a meditation object. Whenever it slips, return it back to that object. PRN, 
whenever <laughs> whenever it's needed when it repeat this as often as needed. so here's your medication right this is your prescription right here's your prescription it's not four times a day it's not five times a day it's not twice a day it's not once a day it's it's just it's as needed as needed how often as needed as many times as needed <laughs> so you see the basic of that right and we could stop there literally we could stop there and that could be that could be a life's work that's it. What are you choosing? And then the question comes, right, is what are you directing your attention to? Right? What are you choosing to direct your attention to? When you're not choosing to direct your attention to something, what has chosen for you? Right? Is it the Facebook page that you're on? Uh, is it the mind that's wandering and has grabbed your attention and pulled you into never, never land? Right. So, so it's, so that's as simple as it gets, which we've, you know, we've said it all in, in similar language. It's just so nice to hear it. You know, it's sort of like repeat this as often as needed. Repeat this PRN. Direct your attention toward a well-defined meditation object. Whenever your attention slips, redirect it back to that object. That's it. Repeat this. Right. And then as you as you advance in the practice, that's why it's how to begin the practice. As you advance in the practice, then what can you do? You drop the object of meditation. That's it. Now the object of meditation becomes simply what appears in awareness. Right? What is that emergence that, that occurs? What appears in awareness in the present moment? And that's it, right? And if we're not focusing on the present moment, then that's, if our, if our attention is not on the present moment, then that's what we bring our attention back. Okay. <clears throat> so as we get more, uh, more into the practice of mindfulness, we can then decide to drop the, the object of meditation. Okay, the meditation object. Now, uh, a meditation object is something you intentionally, intentionally, that's a big word, right? What is What intentionally are you directing your attention to? Uh, that you intentionally choose to be the focus of your attention during meditation. So yes, it can change my, my object of meditation or what we've called the anchor or the resource has changed. It might even change from meditation to meditation, right? Maybe one, maybe one day it's a mantra. It's a repetition of a word or sound. Another day it's uh, it's sound. Another day it might be the sensation of my feet on the ground or the, the sensation of my breath. Another day, it might be an emotion that is being cultivated in that moment, whatever it is. So the object can change, but that intentional choice is made in the meditation. Oh, what am I choosing to pay attention to today, right now, for the next five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, however long I choose to be in this meditation? Right? So there's a... There's an intentionalizing of the next 15 minutes of time that you're going to spend with yourself. Right? How beautiful is that? It's quite divine. It's quite beautiful, actually. You know, I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes with myself. What am I going to choose to pay attention to? Oh, I can choose to pay attention to an image of Jesus appearing in my mind. An image of a flower an image of a of a beach, my favorite beach, just watching the waves crashing. I'm going to choose to pay attention to the sounds that are emerging, the plant that is in front of me, right? The picture of my parents or loved one or my wife and kids, whatever it might be, right? But that's my choice, right? So this is what I'm going to choose to for the next 5, 10, 
15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is. As the attention deviates, I bring it back to that choice, right? So you're so it's almost like, hey, what am I doing now? Right. So it's an it's a, it so it is there's this intentional aspect behind this choice. Although you can choose just about anything. Da -da! <laughs> right? How beautiful is that? Right? Although you can choose just about anything. And then he goes into the breath. The breath is ideal for cultivating attention and mindfulness. Okay, we've talked a little bit about this, but I just kind of want to, I want to, what I want to do is read the language that he uses, because sometimes hearing it in a different language or voice can sort of trigger us differently. The breath is always with you. Second, it allows you to be a completely passive observer. You don't need to do anything such as repeat a mantra, generate a visualization, or rely on any special item like a candle or flower or plant or icon. You can meditate on the breath at any opportunity, wherever you are, every day, even up to your dying breath. The breath also changes over time, becomes fainter as concentration deepens. This makes it suitable for developing powerful awareness since the details you focus on become ever more subtle as sensations grow less distinct. Likewise, the fact that sensations change continuously moment to moment is conducive to insight into the nature of impermanence. And we've talked about that as well, right? That this breath is impermanent. <clears throat> Yet the breath also constantly repeats itself over and over in the same pattern, making it suitable as a fixed, relatively unchanging meditation object for entering states of meditation absor meditative absorption. Because of these different qualities, the breath is used as the basis for the practice of tranquility and insight. Whenever we refer to the breath as the meditation object, we actually mean the sensations produced by breathing, not some visualization or idea of the breath going in or now. Okay. I mean the sensations, temperature, pressure, and air moving on the skin, anywhere around the tip of the nose, the rim inside the nostrils, the upper lip, or just below the nostrils. The sitting can include the movements of the torso or belly. Okay. So do you see how, um, how, how simple this can be? <clears throat> um, although the breath as meditation object has many benefits, the same principles and methods apply to any meditation object and most other meditative techniques. All right, that's what we do in yoga, concentrate on a non-moving object. Yes, that's mindfulness too, it is indeed. It is indeed, you'll start seeing these sort of, um, this, this quality being repeated in various states. Uh, they then go into a, um, what they call the four step transition into meditation, four step transition to the meditation object. And this is what I, this is what I help. This is what I help guide you on. But step one is establish an open, relaxed awareness and attention, letting in everything, but giving priority to sensations over thoughts. Step two is focus on bodily sensations, but continue to be aware of everything else. Focus on sensations related to the breath, but continue to be aware of everything else. Focus on sensations of the breath at the nose, but continue to be aware of everything else. So essentially, you're continuing to be aware of everything else. 
right? As you bring in the present moment, you bring in all experience that is present in that moment if you can. Some people have a hard time doing that. And so you might go to your object of meditation quickly or your anchor, right? And essentially what they're doing in this practice is taking the sensation of the breath and going to a more focused attention, right? And that more focused attention goes from the sensation of, of the breath as a whole to specifically the sensation of the breath as it's passing over the upper lip and into the nostrils. You can choose to do that if you wish. You can choose to do that if you wish. Okay. I usually like to open up. I like to open up that sphere of awareness and see where you are noticing the sensation of the breath the most and allow you to pay attention to that right that's usually how i guide the meditation of the breath is opening up that sphere of awareness including the breath and actually taking two or three deep breaths. And so we are mindfully, intentionally increasing that sensation. Noticing where in the body you actually notice the sensation the most. And then breathing regularly and see where do you notice as a sensation the breath in your body the most, right? Is it at your nose or nostrils or upper lip? If you can't breathe with your nose, is it uh, through your lips or your upper palate or your lower palate or, or the air moving over your tongue, right? Or is it the chest? And really kind of paying attention to it as sensation. And then, Right, we've also done these where if it's difficult to pay attention to it as sensation and we're still choosing to use the breath, do we then actually count? Right, or vocalize in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath, or like, like Thich Nhat Han says, right? Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. Breathing in, I know I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know I am breathing out. And it's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Um, the language he uses is pretty good. So therefore, uh, if there's, if I find anything else in this language that, uh, may be helpful, uh, I will bring it in. I'm always looking for, um, new ways of describing the similar 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 states or similar practices in essence um that makes sense okay let's go into our practice for today So let's find a comfortable posture. A posture you will feel relaxed yet alert. Closing your eyes if you feel comfortable closing your eyes. 
If not, having a soft downward gaze as if you're looking off onto the horizon. And just noticing your experience in this moment. What comes to you as your present moment experience? What do you notice? Where does your attention immediately go? and taking two or three deep breaths and allowing yourself with each inhale to bring in the present moment and with each exhale seeing if you can relax ever so slightly more releasing any tension or stress that you may feel in your body <clears throat> And if not, just allowing it to be there as best you can. And then breathing regularly. whatever pace works for you. And for this practice, Noticing the sensation of your breath in your whole body. Expansive. If you paid attention to your breath as it comes and goes through your whole body, where do you notice it? Do you notice your whole body breathing like a rising and falling? Do you notice a tingling sensation in your limbs? Do you notice an aliveness in your cells? Wherever you notice that and use that as your anchor for this practice, your object of meditation. And just as we spoke about, as your mind wanders, choosing to come back to your object of meditation, your anchor. The sensation of breath through your whole body. And repeat this process as needed.
And now shifting your attention and notice the movement of your torso or chest. As subtle as the movement may be, can you pay attention to the movement of your chest with each inhale? As your breath comes in, your torso expands. As you exhale, your torso contracts. In perfect harmony, cycle of expansion and contraction, allowing the breath to come in, releasing the breath to go out, allowing and accepting, releasing and letting go. <clears throat> allowing and accepting, releasing and letting go and see if you can notice the sensations of your torso rising and falling with each in-breath and out-breath. And as your mind wanders, noticing your mind has wandered without judgment, bringing it back to the object of meditation, our anchor. Now, if you're breathing, with your nose, directing your attention to your nostrils, noticing the movement of the air as you breathe in and out as a sensation at the nostrils. If you're breathing with your mouth, can you notice the in-breath and out-breath as a sensation at the opening of your mouth, on the lips or tongue, and making that now be your object of meditation. Focused attention, intentionally guided to the sensation of the breath, at the nose or mouth with each in-breath and each out-breath. As our mind wanders, coming back to the sensation of the breath focused on the nose or the mouth. Repeat as needed.
and noting where your mind is now. Coming back to the sensation of your breath as you at your nostrils or mouth. And noting your experience. And now expanding your attention. And including any sensation of the breath in your body. from your nostrils to your mouth, to your chest, to your belly, to your whole body. Can you take it all in from the focused to the more broad and general sensation from the nostrils to the whole body? Noticing your breath. As a sensation in your body. From the very specific sensation. Along your nose or nostrils or mouth or upper lip. To a general sensation of breathing in your body. including all the sensations of your breath in the present moment, coming and going, just this breath, just this one breath. And now, taking two or three deep breaths. Feeling the sensation of your breath as you take deeper breaths coming in and out of your body. 
Noticing your state of mind and state of body in this moment compared to when you started the meditation. And just noting any differences or similarities. Opening your eyes if your eyes were closed. Feeling your feet on the floor, your thighs on your chair. Stretching if you feel like you need to stretch. <clears throat> and just taking a moment to reflect on your practice today.